Here's a symptom, and this is on a early 90s Mazda B series light pickup, small pickup. The check engine light is on. S starting to turn signal detents gone, but starting to see this with a lot of early 90s, late 80 to mid 90s ECUs uh, uh, leaking electrolytic capacitors and generally you don't see a problem until they eat the traces off the board. See, now it's running fine. Um, and it will continue to run fine until it sits for several hours. But there's all kinds of different symptoms and issues that bad electrolytics in an ECU and eaten traces will give you from not holding the OBD2 memory, monitor memory to uh, not going into closed loop, to not running right, to excessive rich or lean, to bogus codes. Uh, let's get this ECU apart and see if I'm right. And some of the worst ones that plagued Mazdas really bad early on were Mitsubishi. But another one that's really bad right now are the early 1990s Hondas, Accord, Civic, the capacitors in those niche cons are leaking and eating them up like crazy. If I had an early 90s Honda, I would have recapped it already. Yeah, this one's pretty bad. Now keep in mind that the ECU sits in the car like this with the connector down. Look at here. That one's not leaking. That blue one is a tantalum. Those don't really go bad, and when they go bad, they short. But look at this one right here. Try and get this into the sun. Can you see that? See all that damage? That's a little bit better view, at least to me. You can see where the electrolyte came out of that. 35 volts at 47 microfarads. Here's a microprocessor. Here's a clock crystal. This is probably the, maybe this is where the uh, software is. It's probably a D to A. I'm sorry, A to D converter. But yeah, we only got one capacitor here. And it, it's definitely leaking. So hopefully, and you can see there's actually damage all over this board. Look at this. Yeah, there's a lot of damage. So, let me get that capacitor out. Yeah, it's spread all over the place. Look at that. Now I'm just going to clean this up as best I can with uh, an acid brush and brake cleaner and replace this and try and inspect all these traces and hope none of the traces are bad. Uh, things like this, where it goes through the board, it can, can completely ruin these. And you can spend hours trying to verify all of these until you find the open one. These eyelets that go through the circuit board like this. These are, this damage it would be so much better to just prevent this and recap these computers. 
This is an example of checking one of those eyelets for continuity. Okay, I've been testing traces and this one right here is completely gone right there. So I'm going to have to, this is a diode, I'm going to have to repair from here to the trace. You can see where the copper comes to an end there because it was eaten away. And that's usually when the car will start to exhibit malfunctions and is when something's eaten away. The bad capacitors generally won't cause a problem. I laid a piece of wire in there in order to do that. That's not just solder. Okay, here's another one that's open. It's open right there. And this goes to this resistor, so I got a bridge from here to here. Okay, I repaired that one, and I'm verifying them with a meter. Yeah, it looks crude, but you know, what are you going to do when the traces are... So let's pop this back in the truck and see how it runs. I hope I didn't ruin it. Um, you, know, you, could, you can really spend all day going over one of these trying to verify what trace might be eaten up. Okay, there's the ECU board. Let's see what happens here. And that capacitor is missing. Oh, it missed there. Oh, crap, the check engine light's back on. It's not fixed. Yep not fixed. I guess I could try putting the capacitor in but I don't think that's gonna do it. Let's see how this capacitor checks out. This will be comical. Look at that. Doesn't even really check bad. 47. It's supposed to be 47. The ESR is high but what do you expect when it's leaked half its guts out? So putting that back in is probably not going to make fix the car. I pulled this transistor off because it was completely eaten underneath. And I found another trace. Uh, where is it? Another trace which goes from this resistor over here and then is supposed to go to this lead. Which is totally gone. Not making contact. Take a look at this. Look at the beta on that transistor. Geez, that's almost like a Darlington. That one is bad. The whole copper trace ring from the top of the circuit board for that transistor lead is just gone. I'll put it on the bottom. More beautiful award-winning work. Uh, let's take it and pop it in the car and see if there's a difference. I don't have high hopes for this. Okay, I even tacked a capacitor of 47 in there just for the sake of argument. Here we go. Ah, the light came on. Yeah, I don't have a lot of hope for this computer. This one's too far gone. And you might say, well, how the hell did the car start at all with all these traces eaten up? They build, they build a lot of redundancy into car computers. How often, I mean, think of all the billions of cars on the road. How often is one disabled sitting on the side of the road because the ECU goes bad? Hardly ever. They build so much redundancy into these things. You know, what's weird is... The symptom is exactly the same as it was before. And then finally it would it would be fine. It would start and it would run and it would be good. So maybe the problem is somewhere under the hood, but I you could see the damage there. I mean, there's no doubt as a bad computer. And now it'll just run good for the rest of the day. We should check and see if it's going into closed loop. Maybe it's a bad pickup in the distributor. One of the things that's supposed to be unhappy with this, why it 
doesn't run right is the 5 volt reference and look at the 5 volt reference on this computer so maybe it's not the computer causing this drivability issue but it sure man the computer sure was eaten up inside here's a look at the O2 sensor signal it is definitely in closed loop kind of a tired O2 sensor it should be going up to like 900 millivolts but it's in fuel control wow I think I totally missed this which is that this trace right here is eaten off from I don't know if it crosses over it underneath but that would make sense why there was even voltage on both sides of the capacitor Beautiful thing of beauty, isn't it? Sometimes you got to just do work with what you got. I, I, uh, there might be a problem with the truck. We're going to have to let it cool off. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put this in the freezer and see if the problem comes back right away. Okay, it's been sitting in the freezer for 10 minutes. Now if it doesn't screw up, I'm going to say that the issue is out in the engine compartment. Well, I did fix that electrolytic, uh, that last burnt trace. Let me let it idle for a minute. No, no check engine light, that's good. I'm going to try some freeze spray because it did seem to act up. Uh, kind of cool down one section at a time here. Ooh! Ooh, I hit something there and it went nuts. Yeah, it's completely lost it now. It's missing and seems to be right in here. Yeah, there's a pro thermal problem here. Let me let it warm back up. Okay, now it's just pig rich looking at the O2 sensor. Looking at the O2. Yeah, looking at the O2 sensor. It's kind of going between this and Pig Rich. Now it's back to running happy and in closed loop again. There's something right here. I'm gonna have to find a new one of these. It's just too damaged from the leaky capacitors. Now it's not doing it. And now it's behaving nicely. What a trip. I've been trying to acquire a reasonably priced replacement ECU for a few weeks now. And because these are so problematic with the leaking electrolytics and damage, they go for a premium uh, up to $1,000, which sort of exceeds the value of this vehicle. So in the meantime, I've been driving the truck and it seems to be fairly stable. It still has the starting issue which almost 
seems like the processor is having trouble booting because it's not related to temperature or vibration or anything like that even though it was malfunctioning when I sprayed the cold uh, spray on it I think that was due to just moisture accumulation from being cold because it's so humid out here so the trick I've kind of found with this which for two weeks now seems to have been pretty tried and true is to treat the thing like a diesel also what I've done is I've scoped both signals from the distributor and they're solid and verified all the other signals from all the underhood sensors and they're all good so what I found works pretty reliably is just turn the key on and just wait wait like 20 or 30 seconds and it seems to start fine and run good all day. I'm watching the timer in the camera here. Give it another 10 seconds. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass, but... Also, I will say this with the the correction the corrections we made and I went over it again and I don't see anything else that I can find that's bad or eaten up. I no longer get the erratic idle speeds and check engine light when I'm driving it. So right now it just has the cold or not even cold the overnight sitting starting issue where if you let it sit for eight or ten hours it, it struggles to start unless you turn the key on and leave the key on for a little bit anyway uh, I hope you learned something not really a positive conclusion like I said this is a problem we're starting to see with ECUs and late 80s early 90 car 90s cars now Honda is very well known for it and most of the time I have a successful outcome I don't even like posting videos that don't have a successful outcome but this one didn't but it could have and the majority of the time doing this does have a successful outcome